welcome back to the channel folks and to another distance battle report and by that I mean Brian is playing remotely and I'm in here playing the game and he's viewing on screen. Now this particular game I wanted to play Germans for a change. Brian doesn't normally play Soviets um, but he's playing a list that we've worked together and that he's seen before so he's comfortable with but I really wanted to use Armoured Panzer Grenadiers to try out all those lovely half tracks. It's such a nice looking formation on the table as well, but I believe it's a very tricky one to get a good balance in. In an attacking sense, it's okay to do it defensively. You can be springing up and flying around with your half tracks, you know, um, dodging everywhere, ducking and diving. But in attacking, you've got to go straight up to the enemy and really put those fragile assets um, in harm's way. So we wanted to play a game well, well balanced Soviet force in defence and me attacking with those Panzer Grenadiers. See how it goes to give me some thoughts about the list and hopefully, hopefully help you guys have some thoughts about the list too. But before we go and look at the lists, we had our first uh, war game convention in Scotland since, since the uh, pandemic. So it was great to actually get out to such an event. So. Here's a little clip off the show just to let you see what was going on before we go over to the main contents of the battle report. Here's a look around some of the rooms, some of the games that was there folks. Now this event was never going to be as big as previous years because of all kinds of restrictions all kinds of limitations as well as possibly even appeal because a lot of people are used to staying at home you know so there was nothing really happening upstairs normally there are two three main halls downstairs and two upstairs at the event this year they just had the downstairs and even then they didn't cram as much in as they would uh, on a normal year now the organizers were very happy with the turnout they got much more than they were expecting from what I could see on the day, there's, it was not as full, even with the um, le less number of rooms, it wasn't as full as it would normally be. But you've got to be realistic with what your expectations are when returning you know, to public events such as this. But it was still great to see the retailers making the effort to get there, the people putting on the display and the participation games making the effort as well. Or, you know, these people are are the people who really make the show as well as of course the organizers and then you see a table such as this these are the kind of things that really catch your eye they you want to take all your pictures and your videos for and wave your friends over to have a look at and you know start chatting there's a lot of a lot of work obviously been put into this and um, probably take more than the time it takes to have a convention to play the game but what a sight you know this is one reason why we go folks and why you're going to miss it if you don't go if you don't go back into the swing of it so well done um, to the Falkirk War Games Club a club I used to frequent when I had the time a great bunch of guys uh, I've been to a few clubs in my time even ran a club in my time and Falkirk has got a fantastic range of people playing so many different games and organising events around the club as well as big events such as Carronade. It's arguably the premier war game event in Scotland. So well done guys for putting on another great show and getting us all back out and meeting other crusty old gamers in a hot and sweaty environment if you excuse the um, the, the, the statement guys because that's what it is at a war game show after all. Here's a Panzer Grenadier list with the emphasis very much on the Panzer Grenadier Armoured Infantry 251 half track type options. So you've got the Company Command, these are from Bagration, so they've all got all infantry units have Fausts as part of the costs. So Company Command, two platoons of infantry, they don't have Shreks, couldn't stretch to the points to add them in without reducing other options. But that is there if you want to do that, folks. So two platoons infantry, company command. Now, these are the mortar half-tracks. 
to the Mar Midwar. Sorry about that, folks. Um, but uh, I've got more Midwar half tracks, I think, than I do late war. So four mortar half tracks with eighty mil mortars, and they've got the bombardment, the, the four up firepower bombardment, and smoke, and then. The four stimuls, a very popular unit it seems. Many people max that out to six and go f use it as an ambush unit. Um, then, now there's two stimuls here and two half flamethrower half tracks, but they're just going to be all flamethrower half tracks. I'm not sold on the idea of using flamethrowers in the game pretty much for whatever nation, to be honest. Um, unless they're really, really cheap, like the Soviet ones. But uh, we're going to give them a go here, so that's going to be four flame half tracks and then four pans of force, and that's all co formation. So it's quite a big co formation, but it's very squishy. The Soviet armour could get in about this and cause a lot of damage. So to back it up, first of all, it's got three martyrs with their anti tank 12, which will help against uh, Soviet medium armour. and. Three Wisps with a Panzer III Observer and then three Armour Cars. Looking like they're out of the desert, folks. Sorry about that again. Um, but three Armour Cars, one of them having a uh, 27 centimetre anti-tank gun. So there you go. I mean, it can be spun around and changed. There's um, points that could perhaps upgrade them you know, by thinning out other units to make them panthers if you want panthers uh, but we're going for a sort of medium uh, list on both sides here for this game folks so that's a German list let's see how they do so I've helped Brian put this together because he's very unused to Soviets he has at least played against him so he has an idea of what they can do so these are going to be Hero motor rifles. So you've got the company command, two bases. <coughs> Excuse me, two bases, and then two units of ten. That's ten bases, sorry. Then six mortars, six heavy machine guns, and that's the core formation for the hero uh, motor rifles. And then hero T34, and these are all 85s. So there's two platoons plus the company command. And then backing it up, there is a battery of 122 mils and they've got an observer as well that can um, spot for them or the mortars. Five armed cars. Points could have been used up on additional heavy machine guns for the infantry and so on, but Brian's gone for five armoured cars to be a bit of a nuisance. Two of them, it'll be these guys here, are going to have anti-tank rifles. And then four of the veteran 57mm anti-tank guns. So these guys are careful. So they're going to be hard to hit. And they're going to um, be hitting back with anti-tank 11, which could really hurt the um, medium armour that I've got. And obviously the half-tracks. And remember, these guys are anti-tank 12. So there you go, folks. There's a the Soviet list. Let's see if it's a good matchup against these Germans. The 251 stroke 9 or Stummel is a support half track for your Panzer Grenadiers. It is rated as careful, confident veteran, though it has weaker counter attack um, scores because it's an open topped half track. It's got a 3 plus last stand um, for a third right rule and a stormtrooper rule. Now, the main gun is a 7.5 centimetre uh, gun which can be used in direct fire against. Um, heavy weapons and also against tank teams. It's got an anti-tank value of 9, firepower 3 and it's got the heat rule which means that its gun doesn't lose effectiveness at range. You don't get the plus 1 to your armour save at range if you're an armoured target. So it can be a very good way of bringing support up close with your Panzer Grenadiers but remember it's still got that weak armour that you find in a half track so you have to think carefully about how you're going to deploy them and keep them safe. The 251 stroke 16 is an armoured flame throwing half track for your Panzer Grenadiers. It's rated as careful, reluctant veteran with the special rules of a last stand of 3 plus for third reich, 5 plus for assaulting, 
It's also got the Stormtrooper rule, so you can take advantage of that for getting it in and out of uh, position. Now, everybody is going to want to kill these things when you deploy them, because they can be such a threat. So you have to be careful. The front armour and side armour is only one, so they're going to take a lot of damage if they get shot at. So think carefully about how you're going to get them into that 4 inch range for the flamethrowers. When they do hit, however, any unarmoured teams need to get um, to need to reroll successful saves to survive the hit. If they fail those saves, they're destroyed because the firepower is auto, which means no need for a firepower test. The ZIS-2 is a Soviet anti-tank gun. It's on the same chassis as the 76mm, which can be used for anti-tank or artillery, but this is dedicated to the anti-tank role and has a more effective rating as a result. You can take the support version of this, of this instead of the formation um, based version and the support version is careful, fearless, veteran. So all round a very well experienced uh, team to put on the table. That means they're hard to hit and they'll stick around and unpin. Now the range of the gun, a 57mm, is uh, 28 inches, rate of fire is 2 and anti-tank is 11. It's got a 4 plus firepower on it, so it's not quite as strong as a 76mm, but the anti-tank of 11 can make a big difference. But it does have no HE, which makes it harder to hit non-armoured targets. Today's mission is dogfight. It's going to be the good, solid, defensive um, defensive position that we're looking for to test out these Panzer Grenadiers. You can see it's, the defenders have got one half of the table with a fairly simple and straightforward objective deployment zone in the middle there. The difference between this and no retreat though is the delayed deep reserves which are random, as you can see here. So there is a chance that the reserves will come in right on my flank, which would be nasty, uh, as the attacker, or they could come in on completely the wrong side of the table, which would be nasty for the defender. So it's got a good element of um, unpredictability for us. So the special rules are ambush, the delayed, deep scattered reserves, and the minefields. So there's going to be minefields in this, my particular favourite. Um, now, the victory conditions are fairly standard. The objectives go live at the start of the game and you win the game by being the attacker starting your turn with, within four inches with no enemy teams or defending teams within four inches at the end of your turn. Or as the defender from turn six onwards, the end of your turn, if there's no attacking teams within 8 inches of the objective. So it's a nice, simple mission, but a good test for these Panzer Grenadiers. Let's see what they can do. Right folks, we are deployed and ready to go. Let's have a look at the table and deployment zones. So, first of all, this is a fairly obvious area to defend with infantry. It's got many benefits in that respect for the houses and areas to hide behind, you know, for softer targets such as your artillery. But it's also a bit tricky as well, folks. It's got an open area beside it, but this is a game with scattered reserves. And any game with reserves where those, those reserves are tanks and having to move up through a congested urban area, it can get really tricky. You can end up blocking yourself with other vehicles perhaps um, or having really restricted line of sight and as we'll see it's also it can be a good idea to force an attacker to deploy if they've got tanks from an, an area like this because they've not got very many clear access of advance you know you can't do sort of broadside of tanks moving up. 
In the end though, Brian did choose this side because it was just a bit too much open area over here. I could put a, uh, an objective down here. If his reserve came on and they didn't do any damage immediately, the chances are they would get hit because there's no cover. So there's no chance for him to come up and just defend an objective. Uh, it's just going to be a toe-to-toe -to -toe shooting match, which he may win, but he decided not. What he's going to do is defend from this side, put a minefield over here, meaning I either have to tackle the minefields or I deploy from the town, which has got two open avenues and one area with a lot of cross checks, which isn't very good for most of my force. And if I do go over there, he's got some really good ambush positions to get at me with his anti-tank guns. So, let's see where everything's been put, starting with the objectives. Brian placed one here. It's a good central position where those infantry, if they're not obliged to hold that position, can move out, for instance, to support this objective that I've placed here. Then the deployment of the infantry is in the church, outside as well, and in these buildings. There's like two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, or something like that, plus the commissar. Um, there are thereabouts. And then over here, there's another platoon infantry defending this. You've got a couple of bases in here, one there, one there, command there, one over here, just to I mean, it's, if someone's coming through this gap, they're going to have to assault him or they can't move past. A uh, couple of guys in here, and then mortars, so they can fire off a good line of sight, various directions, and sufficient range. They're not tucked right at the back. It's a fairly exposed position, to be honest, and I might be able to get in and about them. But in that respect as well, Brian's put his armoured cars over here with his anti-tank rifle guys there. They could be a nuisance for my... Um, my half tracks or maybe my armour cars and then he has six heavy machine guns putting cover and fire over anybody coming out of half track to try and clear that um, and also I've got to really to push down this flank I've got to kill them or assault past them um, so there you go folks infantry defending defending armour cars in reserve oh artillery out of sight Observer over there and then mortars with good firing position or a little bit far forward and more uh, heavy machine guns over here. In reserve there are 41 points worth of T-34, 85s and in ambush four nasty 57mm anti-tank, 11 anti-tank guns. So I've deployed thus. Um, first of all observer here He's got half decent line of sight. You can't see that too much over there, but you can move to it if he wishes. The mortars are behind him. Um, with a good line of sight down this side of the table, which is their likely, as you'll see, avenue of advance. Armour cars over there on the road, far side. And then my martyrs behind the hill. The Panzer Fours hull down on the hill. All the infantry behind this wood in their half tracks. The stimulus over here, uh, basically introducing themselves to the Soviet straight away. Flamers ready to come in as and when they're required. Hopefully they'll be required. And the wisps right at the back there, out of any direct line of sight, bearing in mind there could be T-34s roving around um, the table. They could come on, for instance, anywhere up to there, depending on the reserve role. You know, and then it's just a few quick moves. They could be clobbering artillery if they're not worried about all those Panzer Grenadiers coming. So there you go, folks. We're now ready to start. Attack has got the first turns, first turn even. So I shall clear up, tidy up, and um, come back at the end of turn number one. To mention pre arranged end markers, I put my wisps and my mortars and Brian had put his mortars and his 122mm artillery and incidentally his company commands in here.
So German turn one. The only movement I did there was a big crazy dash. They could have gone further, but they went as far as they could, you know, without getting within eight inches of um, an enemy team. Just dashed up that road. Um, now, in terms of shooting, therefore, Stimmels had stayed put. So eight shots on heavy machine guns. Just got one hit because it was a he was at long range, got the ground, concealed. So he did six he's got one hit and he saved. Then the mortars ranged in. The wasps also ranged in. And there was five hits in total between the two bombardments on the heavy machine guns. And Brian rolled four ones out of those five saves. You know, first of all, two died to the mortars and then two died to the... Um, the Wesps and the second in command also got it. That's the mortars ranged in and the Wesps ranged in. So that could be a dangerous place for the company command to be hanging about. So that, that was ridiculously over effective round of shooting from the artillery. Uh, my plan is obviously I'm concentrating on these guys. I want to ready them to stand a chance of lifting those minefields because I don't fancy deploying over there. Um, that's my plan. We'll see if it works. Soviet turn two. <sighs> Heavy machine guns get the prize for the least effective contribution to the Soviet um, cause because they, they liked it, the two survivors, even with the company command there to support them. In terms of movement, these guys dashed up to counter them. That could be interesting. Um, in terms of shooting, there's three bases infantry with line of sight in the half track, so they fired. Uh, they got one hit, but the best they could get was a bail, but it saved quite comfortably. Then company commander in here ranged in, or rather tried to range in, the um, artillery on here. Very juicy target, but failed. They did fives. The mortars managed it, though, on the half track. Excuse me, on the half tracks on the second, um, second dice and managed to hit three out of four because they get re-rolls, there's six of them, remember, and managed to bail. That's about the best they're going to do, but it could potentially, you know, keep them pinned down until, uh, or reduce the effectiveness over the turns until the infantry become eligible targets. So, very little in the way of return Soviet fire there, no reserves yet. They've still got these protecting them, so I don't think I'm about to breach the defensive zone right away. German turn two. So in terms of motivation, it was just this half track here and they got back in. In terms of movement, the Amakars tactically moved around to here from the road. The gap that they passed through was too close to the enemy to allow them to do any kind of dash move. Um, Stumos moved up. Those edged, edged up a wee bit, but that was it. Then in terms of shooting, the Stumos fired. They fired at the tower, got a couple of hits, but no kills. The uh, armor cars are keeping the gun to ground, and the Panzer IVs are holding fire because I'm fearing an imminent ambush. Uh, so that just left it to the artillery, and the artillery did really well again, to be honest. They killed the two infantry bases that were in the tower, it was a four up save away from killing the company, sorry, four up firepower away from killing the company commander. So he survived with the skin of his teeth. And then over here, the, um, the range did over here as well. I think it was the Wesps. Uh, killed the base infantry, another couple in that house, um, but they survived. But another base infantry killed. So that platoon's lost quite a few bases. They're getting pretty thin in the ground. I'm, I'm killing things a bit, a lot more quickly than I would have anticipated, folks. So it's getting a bit hairy, scare them for the Soviets, and they're still not rolling for reserves yet. So let's see, let's see what Brian wants to do next turn. Soviet turn two. Everybody that had to unpin did so. Brian's moved the company commander into that house. It's too, far too dangerous for him there. He's also done a tactical move with armour cars over to here. 
Now he didn't pop an ambush because he was fairly restricted. He's got a line going from those these woods right away over. But for 28 inch range of the guns, it really needs to be over this side somewhere. And at the moment, because of where I put the armor cars, he's lost the opportunity for an ambush in that field, which restricts some at the moment. To back here, I've got artillery ranged in there, so he doesn't want to put them in that area. Kind of puts them in a very restricted field of fire. So he's just going to keep a hold of that for just now. So in that respect, he moved these guys up to get shots on these. Now, they were in the open, so they'd lost a god to ground and so on and so on. And he managed to get two hits with machine guns, one with an anti-tank rifle, but they, they all saved, including anti-tank rifle. Uh, artillery, the one two twos. sorry, the mortars ranged in over here. Got some hits, but no, um, no kills. And over here, the one two twos ranged in. Didn't get any hits on these guys, got one hit over here. He failed it safe, but then he failed his firepower. Um, so he only got a bail. That's a nasty position for me to leave my tanks in. Um, especially those top armour zero ones, because his anti-tank is three. So that's a good range in for him to have. Um, so on to turn three next. And in the German turn, they'll be on for reserve. So Prime might start to get some tanks in, which means you can start to go toe to toe with what light elements have so far flung into the battle. German turn three. Lots of movement for a change folks. First of all, no need to be staying on that hill anymore anyway. So the tanks are moved to here. The martyrs keeping their noses out of trouble so it doesn't get shot off back here. Um, half tracks have moved up, the flamer sorry. These half tracks all moved up and disgorged one base of infantry each in the uh, blitz phase and um, one got hit on the way into a minefield, only the one made a save but they're pinned. Stimmel's moved over as well. So in terms of shooting, first of all the mortars put down a smoke barrage. That's me restricting potential ambushes this turn. Then in terms of shooting, these guys here fired and it was the um, the 20 mil cannons that did it all, managed to Kill two, bail three armour cars, another armour car, um, the first one on the line got killed by a stumel, another one, another one was double bailed but passed its motivation. And then the only other shooting was the Wesps again, down here, they managed to get that command base who's jumped into that building, which isn't under the template, there's still two bases under the template in there. So that platoon has taken a bit of a beating. four bases out of its 11 when you include the Commissar and our casualties. Uh, but Brian will be able to roll for reserves this turn. Um, I don't think he'll stop me getting through all of the minefields but he might be able to shoot me up and at least reduce my chances of clearing the um, those obstacles there because if I can't clear them I'm going nowhere. Soviet turn three so in terms of motivations, the infantry around here, unpinned. One bailed back in and they passed the last stand. Brian didn't pop his ambush yet, that smoke. I've got one more smoke which can, might give me another turn. But once that smoke's gone he's got a good position to ambush me from. Not such a good position over here. Um, maybe less options but he's getting his reserves in. First um, dice roll, he got a platoon off T-34s on. So he's got what he needs up there now to um, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. So in terms of shooting, um, and as I said, uh, these guys followed me out of the half-tracks. They didn't um, blitz out the half-tracks. So it would have been command teams in here. Because um, they've got to go as part of the follow me. So, lots of hits and two failed saves. So. One dead from this platoon, one dead from that platoon. So these are not getting lifted. Can only be that one and that one. Uh, in terms of the other shooting, the, I've got to do the mortars, actually we'll come back to the mortars. Um, over here, the 122s ranged in 
and you can see two bailed out half tracks. That was a result of failed firepower. Um, Brian's Day says not very good tonight. You rolled two ones, otherwise they'd be dead. Um, he could have got a, a two three ups and they'd be gone. He also bailed out the company commander's half track, um, and got a few more hits, but no failed saves. That could have been a really effective turn of shooting, but I'm kind of st stuck there. So I have to think about what I'm going to do. Stay and take the pain or try and move somewhere else if I can think of anywhere to move. But I'm kind of there now and Brian is starting to get here. So the fight for that objective is definitely on. Jim in turn four. Motivation didn't go very well, folks. Despite a reroll from the company command, they never got back in. He didn't even get his own half track on the go. The infantry over here did on pin though. And the infantry issued mine clearing orders, so the ends of that blockage have been lifted. So I generally moved everything up. The half tracks came up as well. I tried to follow me with them, but failed. The tax stayed put, which might be a mistake, but um, just got to make those top armor saves. And these guys have moved up. Then, in terms of shooting, first of all, the Wisps put down a smoke barrage over here and then these guys here managed to kill the bailed out rifle, anti-tank rifle, Amakar, double bail him but he stayed again. The um, the half tracks, these guys, Stumos, these guys firing into this lot, got lots and lots of hits and killed one. Then the mortars ranged in, pinned the Soviet mortars behind and also killed a base of infantry in there as well. So there's only one base of Soviet infantry left alive in there. So there's one, two, three, four bases out of that platoon in command at the moment. One is away over here. So Brian might want to move him, but it may be worth keeping him there as a sacrifice for that objective at the moment. It means there's probably only one guy contesting that. So Brian's going to have to come at me, which it's going to be a bit tricky uh, using infantry, so he might have to rely on his T-34s to do that. Uh, so let's see what he does and um, what more he gets in the way of reserves. Soviet turn four. In terms of motivation, everything was okay except for the surviving armor car. Didn't remount and then ran away. Um, the ambush was popped and reserves arrived. So in terms of movement, this platoon of T-34s moved over to here to allow them to fall in front of that position. And that was about it really. So in terms of shooting, the this guy here shot a, a, a flamethrower half-track and missed. These guys concentrated on the Stumos. Then they managed to get three hits. And out of it all, they got a double bail that had no effect and two dead Stumos. So that's good shooting. Then these T-34s fired at the Flamers and managed to kill two. Um, the artillery... I think... I forgot about the mortars again, man. I'll have to come back to the mortars. Uh, last time they didn't do anything, by the way. But here, they got quite a few hits and managed to kill one Panzer IV. You know, so I took a risk of leaving them under there. I wanted them to be gone to ground until the Soviets showed themselves. I've lost the tank, you know, so um, maybe we'd have lost more to anti-tank fire, who knows. So we'll do the mortars again off camera, we'll see what uh, Brian wants to shoot at and there you go guys, the Soviets have definitely arrived on the battlefield. German turn 5. So in terms of motivation the critical thing here was the stimul. Um The big one got back in, so they didn't have to check. He still hasn't got his half-track back in and he's not running around out there in the open. Um, in terms of movement, the flamers, there's one here and one through there. They tried to shoot, sorry, a blitz and failed. But still got any position to do some flaming with one of them anyway. Um, the marders moved up. These guys blitzed over a bit, they did a subsequent um, uh, shoot and scoot so that these guys, two of them anyway, were firing 
down on the T-34s, aided by them and one Stummel. Everything else was pointed at the uh, anti-tank guns. Now, as you can see, the anti-tank guns got smashed to bits. The mortars failed to range in them, but the Wests did and managed to kill two. <laughs> These are, you know, careful uh, three-up saves and still managed to kill two. And uh, there was a ton of fire that came in from it. all other all other places, but in the end it was a, an MG dice that got the third one. So there's one left, and then these guys got smashed to bits. The Marders killed two, the Panzer Fours bailed and killed um, another. So very, very, very effective round of shooting from the Germans. A lot more than I perhaps would have expected to get, to be honest. Um, so the Soviets have got four T-34s, company command who definitely will come on next turn, and this guy to do some retribution. Um, try and thin down my tanks to see if his infantry can hold on over here. There's actually quite a few bases just within four inches of that. One there, three there I think it is. Three plus company command. So, Brian, let's see what you can do uh, to get some payback. Soviet turn five and the company commanders arrive for the Hero T-34s. And he kind of didn't quite get the location right, guys. I don't think they told him where to arrive. You think he might have arrived with the rest of his company. But he did get himself in a shooting position and miss. Um, now in terms of motivation, he got a back in and stayed and then he also unpinned and stayed. Then there was a wee bit, a wee bit of a blitz. Remember these guys have got the crafty rule so they can uh, blitz and shoot and scoot and such like uh, at a better rating. So the three of them were able to get any position with full rates of fire, wanted to make a move. He just stayed put. Everything else stayed put. So in terms of shooting, between them, these two here only managed to kill a martyr. Then over here, these guys, with all the shooting, needing sixes, only managed to bail out a martyr. A field firepower, or there'd be two dead martyrs. Then the one two twos ranged in first attempt and managed to get a bailed out Panzer IV. So there's something. He might not go back in, though um, company commander's right beside him, so he probably will. Uh, the mortars try to range in back here in the open and never managed it. Uh, and Brian's keeping his infantry, got on the ground to keep them alive, and incidentally he's also started to draw these infantry closer, so he's ready to try and run up and support support them. So a wee bit of payback there. Um, I also tried shooting one of these T-34s at the Stimmels and missed. Uh, a little bit of payback. We'll see, I need to do a bit of manoeuvring to get my full effective rate of fire back at them. So we'll see what happens but it's never a bit of a Mexican standoff. German turn six. Everything was fine in the way of motivations. I can't remember um, if there was any remounts. Oh, there was. He finally got back in. Company command half track, so he's moved up. These guys, armor, uh, Panzer IV, sorry, did a wee bit of uh, blitzing, as did the armor cars. Everything else just went. And he moved from here around to here. And then um, a wee bit of jiggery pokery with them getting them out of the line of sight. These guys come around to put pressure on the mortars. So, in terms of shooting, between these guys and the armor cars, a bucket loads of hits, but only one dead mortar. And um, the artillery had to rearrange in because there's a lot of my stuff around the objective now. And um, rearranged in here. I got a hit from the mortars only, but it's saved. But there's two markers in there now um, from both artillery batteries. And then in terms of shooting, it was quite remarkable. That guy there, he made four out of five uh, saves. Um, he needed like fives and sixes, but he, got, he went in the end and then he, he got bailed. So this platoon's taken a couple of casualties and then the flame throws, great, brilliant. You have to reroll successful saves or you're dead. But they, as I find it, infantry just reroll their successful saves. And uh, they got three hits 
across here and here and they all managed to save so the mortars haven't uh, the uh, flamers haven't done anything <laughs> yet um maybe i just have poor luck with them but i've maybe killed one base with flamers in about three games that's different kinds of flamers uh, so anyway that's it for just now for me folks not a hell of a lot that turn but you know still whittling down the um the t-34s and still keeping my core formation uh, looking not too bad. Soviet turn 5, well, unfortunately this T-34 ran away. He didn't unpin, but he didn't run away. Uh, so these guys here stayed put, well the mortars didn't unpin. Brian just did a wee blitz with him. To have a go at these guys, but to try to keep himself moving over. And he's got to get over to this side of the battle. But they weren't too difficult to hit, but still missed. Shooting these guys on sixes is a bit more of a long shot, so staying out there, I need a fire of two um, to hit those guys on sixes now to try and get himself over. And then, so in terms of shooting, this guy fired at a half track, flamer half track, and missed. He fired at a flamer half track. He could have gone for Panzer Fours. Um, he got a one hit, so one dead flamer. These two fired at Panzer Fours and missed. The artillery, however, managed to get another murder, so he is on the last stand. Um, as is one of the flamers as well. So that's it, folks. So I'm effective shooting that turn. So I think Brian is still currently not looking too bad, to be honest. I'm down to three pans of fours and potentially one murder. So he's, um, he's going to let me down quite nicely. German turn seven. Uh, let me see, the flamethrower ran away, last standing. The murder stayed. Um, the half tracks moved around, but they were hoping to a mounted assault here. But I was hoping to kill him first because I counted a fire. Um, and then that was pretty much it for movement. A wee bit of movement there just to get shots on him. And what happened was he got hit by one of the artillery bombardments with a failed save, but then a failed firepower. And he got hit by one of the armor cars and a failed save, but failed firepower, so he's still there. These guys here got quite a few hits and they made all the saves. Sixes all round, uh, which meant these guys here just did a shoot and scoot out of the half tracks in the buildings. Uh, some of the guys couldn't get in the building because of him. Um, and that was about it really guys. I didn't kill anything. <laughs> uh, so Brian's had a reprieve which he can use to probably dish out some punishment against my armour. Let's see what happens. Soviet turn 7. So. Everything pretty much stayed put. Oh, by the way, he unpinned and he stayed. This guy did a, a blitz to go over the hedge and then stayed put to shoot. Um, the mortars didn't unpin. So starting with the artillery, they managed to get a bail on a Panzer IV. Right? And then him with two shots on sixes, he managed to get a hit. And I mistaken targeted it onto him and he killed it. And then over here, he managed to get a hit from T-34 on a murder and failed a firepower, so just a bail. And then these two here fired at a surviving Panzer IV and got four shots and got two sixes, so another one dead. So there's only one bailed murder and one live Panzer IV at the moment. Oh, so I think it depends if there's some miraculous um, Counterfire, their saves has been incredible. It's made all the difference. Probably kept, definitely kept them in the game. They've had a, they've stayed in and they've done what they needed to do. Now, if I can stay in and maybe with the two get a wee bit of luck, I might be able to deal with them. But the way it's, the way it's been going, I, I don't see that happening. But I'll go over to me now for my um, turn eight. We'll see if these guys stay. German turn eight. So the murder got back in 
it's actually it's this one here, didn't run away, didn't run away. So a wee bit of movement, um, the infantry came across to here, the, armor, the half tracks were down there. I wanted to put an assault in there. <laughs> Not got much assets left um, at all here folks. I would put an assault in on these guys but won't die and won't die. So in terms of shooting, it got clobbered again, another two failed saves, another two failed firepowers. Bear in mind, I'm only looking for um, a four up um, on average for these firepower checks. So it's still hanging about. And then there wasn't a hell of a lot of shots going in here. The, the Stubble's got a couple of hits, but they were quite easy saves. The um, Between them, the uh, Marder and the Panzer IV only got one hit, which resulted in a failed firepower to kill. Uh, one half track tied an assault against that mortar, but it was quite laughable. Nothing came of it. Um, just to remember, there's, there's infantry in these houses, so assaulting out of the house would probably result in being pushed back and counter fire. So I moved these guys over to put an assault in where only the base inside could counter fire, and that was successful. Killed the base, but then they counter attacked and killed me. I failed when my surviving base had to break off. So, um, Brian consolidated back into here though. So, so, once again, I've not done very much. Let's see if Brian can finish off my tanks. And if he can, quite happy to say that's a win for Brian. But let's see what happens. It's one of those games we can't really predict anything so far. Soviet turned it and uh, the worm kind of turned the other way there. Um, I don't know how important that will be, but um, starting with motivation, he stayed but was pinned. Uh, there was some movement here. These guys came out to assault here. Uh, otherwise everybody stayed put. So in terms of shooting, this time they didn't have their dead eye glasses on because he missed. And then these three here missed. And then he missed all shooting at the Panzer IV or the Marder depending on what they could target. The mortars aimed here and um, got a few hits but no um, failed saves and over here they tried to finish off the, the smarter here with one two twos but no luck then these guys here tried to launch an assault into there and there were six dice of counter fire because of two bases and I got, I got five hits and one base died out of the four that ran in um, so I'm still in it just now we'll maybe play another turn See if I stick about, that's probably the most important thing with my tanks. And um, see whether or not we're heading for a draw or if somebody can somehow manage to squeeze a win out of it. Well there you go folks, my turn nine. My Panzer IV ran away. My Marder stayed and it missed. Um, these guys finally killed that uh, anti-tank gun. So we're just going to call that a draw folks. I don't have much left, but it is turn 9, we've been playing for ages, and I do have two pretty much intact platoons of infantry around that objective that could take some time to get away there in buildings, so he's going to have to come at me with, my, with his infantry. Uh, his, his tanks won't be able to do too much against them, so we're just going to call it a draw. Hard fought draw, but uh, we'll go with a recap and uh, think about the game, particularly in terms of Panzer Grenadiers. What's your chances in attack? Right folks, time for the recap. Sorry it was another draw, but hopefully it was a entertaining one. Uh, so, let's have a look at the game ahead. Let's look at the Soviet side, uh, first of all. So, Prime is quite happy with the way how it turned out. He's not used to playing these kinds of lists, so he's um, it's went as well as, as I think he could have expected. You know, it's probably he's probably in a better position to win the game if we another hour, let's say, to play it, because he would got uh, he would have three tanks left here, one over there. That would be enough to whittle me down. But my basically intact infantry platoons would take forever to destroy. So that's why. We've just called it a draw and well within 
eight inches off that objective, if you see what I mean. Now, they, these guys here are really who want it for the, the Soviets, with a good bit of help from them, I would, I would say, because they took such a beating. They just kept rolling fives and sixes for their saves. Even the one that was destroyed passed about five saves before it finally was destroyed. And then, you know, they survived that beating and got a lot of hits, even with him giving them some support, got a lot of hits, uh, hitting those murders with a weak armour. That's all they had to do was hit them and that dealt with them. And then the artillery coming down, smash, smash, every now and again destroying a vehicle when you've not got so many vehicles. You know, I'm used to artillery um, not doing that well against tanks, but I've been having a hard time lately against artillery, so I maybe need to start showing them a bit more respect. So it came down to these guys, I reckon. The infantry were just hanging on to no more there. Um, three in that unit in command, uh, with the guys holding on. But from my point of view, in terms of getting a victory, I really should have focused on killing him. You know, then I wouldn't have to worry about them. But at the same time, you know, I could have turned all the guns over that way. That, that might, I did it, it might not. I might still have missed. But then I've still got to push in this direction to make sure I can kick these guys that were over here off the objective. So, in terms of these Panzer Grenadiers, one thing's for sure, no flamers. I'd rather spend that eight points on something else. Another Panzer four and a Shrek, you know. Uh, I just have, I never have any luck with them. Every time I use them and they hit anything, my opponent always makes his reroll saves. You know, there's, there's no guarantee of actually killing anything. It's not a hit and a kill, if you see what I mean. Um, tricky, tricky list to attack with. On a more mobile game, where your, your opponent's infantry are going to be more mobile, you're going to be in a much better position. But try to use it as a sledgehammer. It's a real challenge. It's a real challenge. But I really like this kind of unit. So I will try and play it again at some point. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you're a subscriber, thanks for doing that. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so, because it will help us build the channel, bring this kind of content to more people who enjoy the gaming. As well, folks, I believe you have to hit the bell button so you don't miss any of the reports as they come up. Okay, folks, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again on the next one.